And so, let us begin. The title of my report is Plasticine Stones in the Fortress of Saxayaman. Saxayaman is located in Peru. It is located near the city of Cusco. From above, this fortress has a saw-like shape. There was something there at the top, originally, which was protected by the Incas. It's not clear what that was, since there is nothing there now. But they built this saw-like fortress. And so the Ministry of Culture in Peru was very concerned about the megalithic masonry, where the blocks were very tightly laid together that you couldn't even fit a piece of paper through them. However, for some reason, the wall started to come apart. So the ministry was concerned about why this is happening and what could be done to stop this process. The first thing which was done was a scan using geo-radar. The Muscovites helped with this. The result was this image where we can clearly see the zones of fracturing. There were signs of sinking in the cross section. In other words, underneath these constructions are either casts or some kind of cavities. The prevailing opinion is that these hollow cavities contain something which was originally being protected by this fortress. In parallel to these investigations, we also wanted to find out what kind of stone was used for the building of this megalithic wall. Surprisingly, there were never any microsections analyzed or any analysis whatsoever done on the blocks from this wall. What is interesting about this is that at first glance it seems to be limestone. Each block varies slightly from the next, However, on one of them I observed a flowing shape like this. On another there was a feature resembling a hand imprint. The other blocks looked normal. What was the matter here, we wondered. So we took some samples and brought them here to Khabarovsk for analysis. First of all, we determined that this is limestone. It successfully dissolves in various acids. All of these stones dissolve, leaving practically no remains. Here we took a sample from the masonry wall and another sample was taken from the quarry where these stones are thought to have been obtained for the construction of this wall. Here are the samples from the quarry. It's clearly limestone, not much more can be said about that. Here's what it looks like under the microscope. Any geologist can clearly see that this is organic limestone. It is practically all taken up by these organic skeletal remains. Here's another sample, also from the quarry area. Here we also clearly see these organisms, and around them is this cement which is neither transparent nor crystalline in nature, just as it should be in any organic limestone. We also took samples from the masonry wall. Here's what we saw under the microscope. Fine microcrystalline limestone. Almost not even limestone, but more like marble. However, marble in most cases is macrocrystalline, with large crystals in other words. But here we have very fine, fine, finely crystalline limestone material. In some places there's a vein running through it, which are kind of filled with this larger sized material. And so, these are the plasticine stones among them here. Here you can see the masonry of normal blocks, and in the middle is this trout that cuts through them. This trout clearly has the flowing wavy shapes on the sides. So nature doesn't do that. Things like this. This is what plasticine stone looks like under the microscope. This is the clearest example of quote-unquote plasticine stone. In other words, this is very, very, very fine microcrystalline calcite. Calcite-like rock. What kind? Carbonate, calcite in general. Here are the two analysis results side by side. On the left is the one from the quarry and uh, on the right is the one from the wall with those plasticine stones. Any geologist can see that these are practically the same material. 
there might be slight variations, a bit more calcium here, maybe a bit more potassium there, but overall these values are within the limits of sensitivity. So they're basically the same. So the first is organic limestone, and the second is the fine crystalline carbonate-like rock. They're the same, uh, twins and brothers. However, in fact, these are two different materials. So here we have a question. What happened here? The simplest explanation which comes to mind is these Peruvians quarried this limestone, then pulverized it into a fine-grained powder, then roasted it to get quicklime, and then after mixing it with water, poured their blocks. The question is how did they survive intact for over a thousand years? Because conventional lime-based mortar wouldn't last this long. So, there were either some technologies which made them extremely durable, or maybe there were some kind of additives or something like that. Possibly if we do a more thorough and finer tuned chemical analysis, maybe we can find out what it was. I mean, this is a very interesting question. These huge megaliths, and then how did they accomplish the construction itself? That's also not clear. Hypothetically, you would take a certain volume, pour in the mixture, what you got is what you got. And then lay a sheet of paper on top of it and pour the next block above it. And then every joint is practically non-existent, with both blocks very tightly fit together. Without the need of any kind of polishing or cutting anything, everything is perfectly formed. This is one of the problems, which unlike the question about the stones of the pyramids in Egypt, which are very theoretical, talking about aliens, uh, that extraterrestrials came and built something, that and the other, This has very little bearing on anything. Yes, it's interesting, maybe it's true. But our question here, if we were to follow up and analyze it further, to find out what it was that these additives were, would be very interesting. I mean, it could have uh, very practical applications for us. This slide, we still have to analyze this, but as you can see, this gray mass on top of it is the plasticine stone. And then below it is the andesite. So some kind of an andesite surface, and then on top of it, they molded whatever they wanted. The point of my report here is also to make you think about this issue. Why do you say plasticine? The blocks in the walls are also carbonate. No, we say plasticine in the sense that they were molded in various forms. Oh, I see. In quotes, then. If you have any questions or hypotheses, please feel free to share them now. The deformed blocks in the masonry of these megalithic constructions, are they the result of the properties of these plasticine stones? Well, nobody ever analyzed the properties of these plasticine stones. All that we have is what I've shown you here. What is happening underneath the wall is also being examined right now. Not much is clear. This is why it's interesting and I'm asking you for your opinion as to how to move forward. I saw that you had done the chemical analysis, but you did not do an energy dispersive x-ray analysis. Well, all we have is what I have shown you here today. So it looks as if this was done over a week's time and in a short period of time. And so, I mean, what would that give us? Well, perhaps it could tell us more about the organic remains in the stones which have them. Well, maybe the paleontologists could determine the age of these stones, but I fail to see what this would accomplish. <coughs> Seemingly, the facts presented here today do not fit into our perception of reality. They always lead some people to come up with supernatural origins of these phenomena. Personally, I think that this material transformation could occur not only through the chemical means, but also according to the laws of rigid body physics. For example, let's take the formation of golden nuggets in alluvial deposits under the conditions of permafrost. 
forming from very small sized particles into a nugget. What this means essentially is that the debut temperature near the zone is very low. This allows the metal to be in a state of plasticity, even under normal conditions with the temperatures ranging from below zero to negative 100 degrees centigrade. On the atomic level, the bonds in the crystalline lattice will vibrate and the gold will have the ability to stick together. So, what we observe here in these photos makes me first of all think that the deformation of these blocks occurred according to the laws of uh, rigid body physics. The builders of this wall gave the initial geometric form and then the blocks fused which created such monolithic mass that you couldn't even fit a piece of paper through them. This was due to the fact that the blocks grew as a result of the processes which occur when particles stick together and grow to form the aggregates. Therefore, I think we should examine the chemical content which makes up these limestone blocks and look for the signs of the debut temperature and the resulting deformation. The sticking, growing, enlargement of the volume, or the reduction of the volume. I'd like to conclude by saying that I think we should find the answer when we examine the material itself. I think that the transformation occurred as a result of the processes of rigid body physics. Thank you. Could you please show the slide with the megalithic wall? Will this do? Yes. If we're talking about pouring, then there should be at least one horizontal surface on top of these blocks. This masonry was not poured. These blocks were laid together by fitting and adjusting. There are walls similar to these ones in the Caucasus and other places where people took stones without any preparation, constructed walls with a binding mortar. Tell me, what kind of pouring could be the result of what is seen in this area here? This is all natural limestone laid together using a conventional method. In this case, I think we have to focus our attention on the issue that these asphalt-like features are most likely the result of a solidification of a liquid solution, a lime-based solution. If you take magnesium solutions, for example, how are they made? First, you roast magnesite in the presence of charcoal to produce magnesium oxide, and then mix it with water, and it then forms bonds which are similar to a solution of hydrous magnesium chloride or bischofite. And as the solution forms, it quickly solidifies, and no new elements appear there. In other words, in terms of composition, it again becomes magnesite. Analogously, it would seem that the story is the same with a lime-based solution. Actually, if a wall is made out of a lime-based plaster, then over time it turns into limestone plaster. This is because the CO2 from the air bonds with it gradually over time and it slowly turns into limestone. However, in this case, it looks as if the transition to limestone was very rapid. And this rapid transition could be due to some kind of special mixing additive. And using this special mixing additive would make this kind of uh, fine microcrystalline body, perhaps. 
Maybe the builders possessed this, or it could be that there were certain conditions in Peru, maybe a conditions of uh, low water saturation. Perhaps there was a certain temperature regimen which allowed this to take place. I think we have to take our analysis into that direction. I have a few words to add to this. Firstly, we have to continue conducting our chemical analysis. Secondly, we have to examine the physical and mechanical properties of these creations. That's one thing. The second, and probably most important, is geology. In other words, a good geologist must be sent to Peru, who would walk around, take samples and see for himself, take some microsections for analysis, uh, and then most likely this dilemma would be resolved. Thank you. I think collectively we learned a lot here today and uh, have moved forward. Tea and coffee is that way and we will continue our discussion there. Thank you.